And folks, this morning, as we think about that, what we need to understand is what that tells me is I need to evaluate my life as I think of developing a missional heart is to look at how urgent is the search for me? How urgent is the search? How much value am I placing on that? Because you see, God's looking out of the world right now and saying, I want to bring every person home to me. And He's making a phone call. And you know who His 911 call goes to? It's to every single one of us. And the question is, as we receive that call, God said, is our question is, am I going to respond? Am I, am I willing to step up and be a part of God's rescue team in the world? Am I willing to step up and be a part of what God is going to do? All we have to do is begin to take steps towards that, and we'll be on our way to developing a missional heart. So first we need to evaluate our attitude. Then we need to intensify our search. And finally, uh, to develop a missional heart, we can uh, be on our way to doing that when we experience God's joy. When we allow ourselves to experience God's joy. Now we see this again in this story. There's something that the text says is bringing all of heaven joy. It's bringing God joy. In fact, a paraphrase that isn't due to me, but uh, or didn't originate with me, is when one lost person comes to know Jesus, all of heaven is throwing a party. Heaven is rejoicing over that. But you know, it is interesting that in this story, that wasn't the response of the religious leaders. And I want us to see this again in verses 5 through 7. It says that when he finds it, uh, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. And look at this. And then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, look at this, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. You know what's very interesting is I think what Jesus was trying, what, what maybe he was even perplexed by in this story, is that the religious leaders should have been represented by the friends in the story. They, they should have been the people who saw that the people coming to, to into a relationship with God and, and, and growing in their desire to know God and look at that and be rejoicing over that. Be ex literally experiencing the same joy that's going on in heaven should have been in their hearts. And I think Jesus would have been looking at them and saying, what's wrong, guys? You're missing it. You're missing an experience with the joy of God. You know, I think that's something that God wants for us. I, I think... What will help us develop missional hearts if we can allow ourselves when, when it takes certain things in order to reach out to people and see them come to know Christ, that we would experience God's joy over that, that we would rejoice over it, that we would literally get to experience something that maybe brings as much joy to the heart of God as anything. You know, there's a verse in uh, Philemon, uh, in, in the book of Philemon, it's verse 6 that I've always found to be very, very interesting. In fact, I think it's easily overlooked. And I'd like to pause on it for, for just a second this morning. It says this. It says, I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith. Now look at this. Why? Most of the time I think when, when we think of why God would want us to share our faith, it's because of the benefit to the person who's shared with. I mean, I think that's something that certainly is there and often... I know that's what I thought about. But this verse goes on to say, so that you, so the focus isn't in this verse on the person who might be saved. The focus is on the person that is doing the sharing. So that you will have a full understanding of every good thing that we have in Christ. You know what that verse says to me when I think it's saying? It's saying there are some things that God wants us to experience. That there is no other way to experience other than sharing our faith with those who don't know Jesus. I think part of that is joy. I think there's a certain kind of joy that we can never experience unless at some point we become active in sharing our faith. You know, every single year for the last nine years on February 9th, I've received an email. Every single year. It'll happen, I'm pretty sure, next February 9th. And every single year, it's from a man named Roger Anderson. And Roger Anderson, nine years ago, is a man that by God's grace, um, I had the opportunity to lead to Christ. And, 
every single year, the subject line in the email is exactly the same. It says, I know who's from, just from reading. It says, happy birthday to me. And it's coming from Roger, and he's talking about his spiritual birthday. And folks, every year I open up that email, and uh, Roger starts expressing some things uh, to me for sharing Jesus with him. And he shares a lot of things that, that I'm not even sure I deserve to be said about. But I can tell you, without a doubt, every single year, there is not a single year by the time I'm done reading that email, there are tears streaming down my face. That's what's happening this morning. And I can tell you, there are tears of joy. Tears of joy that I got to be a part of at least one other person coming to know Jesus. In fact, you know what happened two years ago? I was sitting at lunch with Roger. And he had his palm pilot, it's kind of a techie. And uh, he slid it across the table to me, and there were 13 names on it. I had no idea who any of them were, and I asked him, he said, Brian, I'm showing you those because I want you to know something. Those are the 13 people I've led to Christ since the day you led me to Christ. 